What are you doing, Becky? Oh, I? One second. <laughs> Very important. I am busy. I'm busy. Did I get him with his reflection? I think I did. I have got the 800mm f6.3 just for a day or two. And I'm just taking some bird photography. We're out in a wildlife reserve and we're going to put this little baby through its paces. I've also got the TC 1.4 with me. So we're going to try that a little bit later too. And I also have a Z9. And you also have a Z9, which, as you can see, I'm not using. <laughs> <laughs> shoot about f8 just to be on the safe side because I actually you know the birds are so far away it's quite difficult to tell if they're in focus or not and by the time you've chimped the screen to see if you're in focus they've moved <laughs> so, so I've gone from 6.3 to f8 My feeling, just looking at the back of my Z6, is either the resolution isn't high enough to, you know, 150% crop, <laughs> or 100% crop, or that it's not quite as sharp at infinity as it is closer focusing distances. The close ones, as soon as the subject is like 10, 15, 10 meters away, 15 meters away, the pictures look really, really sharp on the back. But that's all on the back screen. I mean, the, the pictures at home will tell the tale, really. And thank God I've got a Z9 with 45 megapixel sensor. Exactly. That's what we need next, really. But I just want to get these. So this is the perfect time to get the 1.4 converter out and see if that will help me. That's me first time trying this lens, so that's not bad. That's you make it look so bad. easy. Because <laughs> you know, because I worked up <laughs> on PlayStation. So this Z9 here, this and this feels almost the same weight-wise. I don't know why, but probably because of the you know the weight dis distribution. So, um, but let's put this on. I think we definitely need the long reach but we also need a high resolution because we can't get too close to the birds so just put this on find out Okay, that's good. Okay, so shots with priority, thousands of a second. So we are looking at ballpark 500 ISO. That's good. We've got continuous focusing, animal recognition. That's all good. And 
Why won't we use the full watch focus area? Let's see. Let's see if we can handle it. Okay. Let's have a look. Got that bird over there. Oh, Becky. Trust me. Am I missing the golden shots right now? Uh, you're missing a good camera. <laughs> you're trying to convince me that I need a Z9. Everyone needs a Z9. You know, I'm going to try it later. I'm going to put that lens on the Z9 and I'm going to see if I can get the shots that I want. Are we going to film you going straight to the bank? <laughs> Withdrawing the money that you don't have? <laughs> yeah, exactly. OK, we are far away, actually. So let's go and find a good place. You know, this actually weights less than the gimbal and Z6 with 24-70 F4 that you're holding right now. <laughs> I believe it. It's reasonable. It's reasonable. Just I wouldn't mind to have it. Give it 20 minutes and see how your arms feel. <laughs> So those function buttons, they assign to autofocus. So actually it works as AF1 button, mm. which is pretty good actually. Your hand sort of ends up resting there automatically. Yeah, but then you have autofocus activated at all times. Yeah. Which is not bad. Yeah, I'm feeling my hand now. What did you say? Ah, oh, nothing. <laughs> I'm feeling my hand now. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that view. This quote is on the post. I'm going to put it on a t-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so now the smart light is filling the frame. So that's with 1.4 teleconverter. Oh, and that's what? Probably about seven, eight meters away from me? A little bit more, I think, but yeah. Tiny bit. Yeah, about eight or nine meters. And he's completely filled the frame. Yeah. Here's another one. Easier on bigger birds, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Is the Z9 tracking him? Mm-hmm. That's why you need 20 frames per second. Yeah. I think you should be able to get it in 10, hopefully. They're geese. I want to shoot geese, I've just got to Batsy Pan. <laughs> well, I'm glad from all okay. the photography we did today, we at least have close ups of geese <laughs> with 800 mil. Very important. I think we need to go to a different country if we want different birds. <laughs> Here we have a brown goose <laughs> and another brown goose. Oh, look, there's another brown goose <laughs> right there. of points that I would like to make mm -hmm. after using it. Yes, my wrist feels it after about 20 minutes of carrying it around. That was with the Z6 as well. It's definitely much better balanced on the Z9 than on the Z6. Um, obviously with the Z6 you have to support it from the lens entirely. Yeah. Uh, in terms of focusing, once I put the teleconverter on, the focusing did struggle a little bit and I'm really splitting hairs but occasionally it would just throw the focus completely out of range which I found slightly frustrating and then I'd have to bring it back into range it would just you know, you know it would go completely out of focus for me but having the buttons here is really helpful first I was hitting them accidentally because mm -hmm. that's where my hand was resting and then once I realized that I could use those yeah you learned to live with them I learned to live with them I've and learned to love them in fact. When Nikon talks about hand-holdable, it really is for short periods of time. It's still a chunky lens at 2.3 kilos. <laughs> I wouldn't hold it 
for holiday shooting handheld. It's just it's just impossible, really. So unless, of course, unless you're, you're a bodybuilder, a gym guru, or something, <laughs> you know. But get a tripod. It's definitely lighter than something like 400 or 600 2.8 primes. For sure. And I would say for any bird photography, get the longest lens you can possibly get, and add teleconverter on top because we find that. 800 we thought it's going to solve all our problems we did find that sometimes we need to use teleconverter just to get closer that's right now the 1.4 teleconverter image quality wise doesn't detract from the the sharpness so you've got no problems there it's just bear in mind that you're going to get about f9 and uh, you're not going to get quite as fast focus with the converter on it So, let's see what we've got. Let me get my macro lens out now. More. Huh. Now, we started 60 meters. 60 meters away. From the lens. What we do now is we're testing the lens for the video. See what the rendering is like, the focusing speed. I mean, we're not working that fast, but also, what is the closest focusing range? Let's have a look and find out. But overall, pretty nice lens, I can tell you that much. Excellent. All right, here I'm we are, here we are. Other, well, we're like way not in range now. There's no way, no way. Okay. And I didn't record anything, that's lovely. Just kidding, joking? just kidding. This lens is for wildlife. I would say that you can do some aviation with it. You can certainly do some sports with it small bird photography as well if you've got the patience and you're sitting in a wooded area or somewhere where small birds like to be then you can definitely use this for that it works great with the 1.4 converter obviously we don't have an opinion on the two times because we don't have one to bring along with us what else could you use it for well you can put it on the shelf if you're a rich person and just look at it <laughs> but i can see it could be used for sports as well especially for outdoor sports where you are quite far away from the action. So not football really, but maybe a cricket or something like this. So, you know, I assume that something like Blood Moon would work really well. Oh, Astro, yeah. Exactly, paired with high resolution sensor or teleconverter, you can get even extra reach either via optical solution or via crop. So the options are there. Mm. I really wouldn't shoot indoors with it. The closest focusing distance isn't the best for flower photography. I was mm. highly disappointed. No, I'm just kidding. I did take some flowers with it, but you, but you do have to be a little bit further away. But it's actually something that I could see being used for sort of dragonflies, kingfishers, reasonably far away and very patient. That's what I was going to say. That's true. And then keep in mind that framing with this lens yeah. is quite difficult because it's a such a long reach. So if you see a bird taking off, you can't just quickly switch and start to shoot that. You almost need to sit with your face first, with your eyes first, where you need to point the lens and then put the lens on. And with a camera like Z9, you still will have time to capture that. Yeah. I wanted to put it on a Z6 because not everybody is going to use it with a Z9 and I wanted to see what the performance would be like. Certainly with a higher resolution sensor, you get more cropping power. The autofocus and frame rate on the Z6 is not as fast, but it's perfectly usable for a lot of photography. You just need to take a few more shots than you would normally need to take with a camera like this because you might not get it in the first couple. I think cropping is actually a very interesting thing. So if you're thinking of upgrading your camera, let's say from Z6 to Z7 or Mark II to Z7 Mark II, cropping is the main advantage for this type of photography. Yeah. Birds far away where you don't have enough reach, even let's say with 800 mm teleconverter, 45 megapixel sensor will allow you to crop a little bit more than 24 megapixels. I hope you enjoyed watching this video as much we enjoyed recording it. If you did find it useful, do hit the like and subscribe button as well as soup thanks if it's super, super useful to you. We actually were loaned this lens by one of our very lovely customers. So we'd like to thank them, although they'd like to remain anonymous for the loan of this lens. If you'd like to see us test out any other equipment, if you need reviews, let us know, drop us a comment below and thanks as always for watching.
the main con for the Costa Rican coffee. Yeah, it's definitely a save the day on this chilly morning. It has indeed. Oh, I missed one. <laughs> we just love to be in the shade with a very bright <laughs> background. So it's all, all we exposed over there. At least our faces are okay. not in shade, hopefully. That's what we're hoping. Okay.